In this video, we're going to find the derivative of this function. So before we do it, we're probably going to rewrite this using some properties of logs because if we just try to take the derivative right away, um, we're going to end up having to take the derivative of this inside piece using the chain rule, and that's no good. So let's go ahead and start by rewriting this first using the properties of logs. So I'll start over here. So h of x. So first we're going to use the quotient rule property of logs. Whenever you have a fraction, it turns into subtraction. So this whole thing will be log of the top piece. So log base 3 of x square root x minus 6. And then minus log base 3 of 3, right? It's just log of the top minus log of the bottom. That's one of the properties of logs. It's if you have the natural log of a over b, that's equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Very, very useful property of logarithms. And we can expand this even more. Uh, this right here is multiplication. So multiplication turns into addition. So h of x is equal to log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of this piece here. Um, in the next step, we're going to do some more simplification. So I'm going to go ahead and write the square root of x minus 6 as x minus 6 to the 1 half power like this. x minus 6 to the 1 half. And then we have minus log base 3 of 3. Okay, we're almost to the point where we can take the derivative. Let's go ahead and put this 1 half in the front. Again, that's another property of logs. So h of x is equal to log base 3 of x plus, and then just put the 1 half in the front. So 1 half log base 3 of x minus 6 minus log base 3 of 3. So remember, whenever you have an exponent here, you can put it in the front. That's called the power rule. And here we use the, what's called the product rule, right? So if I'll write it here so you see it, if you have the natural log of a times b, that's the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. That's what we use to go from here to here. The times became a plus. And then from here to here, the 1 half went into the front. Okay, now we can take the derivative. You might have noticed a long time ago, or maybe you didn't, that this piece here is just equal to 1. Log base 3 of 3 is, is just 1. But if you don't notice, it's okay. Because when we take the derivative, it's going to go away because it's a number. So h prime of x. So the formula for log base 3 of x is 1 over x, 1 over ln 3. Right, That's the formula. Recall, if you take the derivative with respect to x of log base a of x, this is equal to 1 over x, 1 over ln a. So in this example here, a is 3, so it's simply 1 over x, 1 over ln 3. Here, this 1 half hangs out, so plus 1 half times, and then it's 1 over x minus 6, 1 over ln 3, times the derivative of the inside. So notice the order in which everything was Explained. So when you take this derivative, it's just 1 over this, 1 over that. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 1. It wouldn't have mattered in this case if you put the 1 here or here, but I just want to emphasize that's how the process works. So the derivative of the outside is 1 over x minus 6, 1 over ln 3, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. And this derivative here is 0, so minus 0. So the final answer would be 1 over x, 1 over ln 3, plus, I'm going to pull these constants out front, I'm going to write it like this, 1 over 2 ln 3 times 1 over x minus 6. And that would be an acceptable form of the answer. Typically you put constants in the front, that's just a typical thing that uh, people do. I didn't do it here, but you know, the reason I didn't do it here is because it could have caused confusion. If I do this, that's not clear, right? Is, is the 3 connected to the x? Or, or is the ln 3 connected to the x? What, what's going on there? So not good practice. It's good to try to write things in a way that's as clear as possible. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.